we uh, continually encounter clients who come to us and present with the symptoms of FASD. And um, the, the clinic uh, that was taking them is shutting down. So the idea was born probably a year, year and a half ago that uh, as service providers we should do something about it. And, and here we are today uh, actually starting and doing the FASD assessments. So initially a, a client is identified in one of the agencies or one, by one of the service providers somewhere in, in, in Calgary and is referred to us. Uh, when that happens, we have an LPN, Erin, and she will start gathering the, the background that we need to have in order to, to see whether this client actually first qualifies. I'm the first contact for our FASD clients. Um, I do a very comprehensive intake application form, searching almost like a detective into uh, medical history. Do we have confirmation? Do you have confirmation in your family via family members or? And she will screen out the information and we're, we're going to start doing some tests. So psychologist is involved and, and also the physician uh, or a medical doctor is involved as well. And that is really about uh, looking at facial features. Our occupational therapist uh, provides another battery or several batteries of assessments just to see where the levels of impairment are. What's the name of the Prime Minister? Uh, Justin Trudeau. What's the name of the President of the United States? Donald Trump. Good. It's a shaming thing. It's a, it's a hard thing for a woman to admit that, because there's so much, so much stigma around it, for her to admit that she drank during pregnancy, right? So we have to flag in other ways. So one of the ways that we flag and one of the things that is most commonly impaired with FASD is executive functioning. So that's a big flag for us. Can you show me how you make one dollar in all coins without using the loonies? Okay. So these, it looks like a simple task, but it really is assessing that. And when you take it in an overall assessment for FASD, that flag of executive functioning would be how we eventually go to that diagnosis. Uh, verbal comprehension, processing speed, reason. What we do here is psychological testing. And so uh, one of the first things that we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at how uh, how you did in school. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that's probably been like two years ago or something. No, I'm kidding. So after we do the testing, uh, the client is free to go. <laughs> and, but my work doesn't end. Uh, I have to interpret and see what really these numbers mean and what are they telling me about what's going on for my client. So, so the FASD assessment is a, a very uh, comprehensive process. It takes uh, multiple service providers, professionals uh, who are all working together, hopefully like clockwork, to come up with a diagnosis. So what we need to do now is we need to take the recommendations that Boris has come up with, that Sam has come up with, and that the doctor has come up with. The advocates have already met with Aaron, so we know what different supports that we're going to access in the community. And those are the really important pieces. This is why we get a diagnosis. So once when the person has diagnosis, you know, a lot of doors open. And there's lots more services that are available. Some of our clients may uh, qualify for additional funding. And not only that, but like in any diagnosis, once when you have a definitive diagnosis, you can actually begin treatment. We may not be able to reverse the damage that was done, but what we may put in place is strategies to scaffold our client to live successful lives.